Chapter 19 Exploring the Study Jinhua flopped into the large old recliner in the corner of her father's study and let her muscles go limp. The last few hours had been an emotional roller coaster, and all she wanted to do was take a nap. Her eyelids came heavy. Sleep tempted her, but her mind still whirled with unanswered questions. Why had Dad been kidnapped? Who had done it? Is he still in danger? Am I in danger? Daniel stood next to the chair. He had been on his device during Jinhua's conversation with her father. Now that they knew he was safe, he directed his attention back to her. I'm glad your dad is okay. I was a little worried there for a minute. Me too. From her reclined position, her eyes began to sweep across the expansive study. With their crisis averted, she began to take in the scope and magnitude of the place she had labeled as forbidden for the first time in her life. All this time, this room has been an operation center for his work. The dim lighting and the wall of monitors reminded her of the Space Operations Center at Vandenberg Air Force Base down south except without the busyness and all the engineers shuffling around. It seemed like it was always frantic there. At least that was what she gathered about the place during her multiple virtual field trips to the center. Dad probably works here alone most of the time. Jinhua closed her eyes, considering that nap. As soon as she did, her stomach growled. It reminded her how she hadn't eaten since her early lunch at Star of India with Harpreet. Maybe I'll go down and get a snack before Dad gets back. Upon opening her eyes, she noticed Daniel no longer stood beside the comfy recliner. He had wandered from the corner back toward the massive desk with the document readers in the center of the room. This really is a cool workspace. What do you think your dad uses it for? He said loud enough for her to hear in the corner. Jinhua sprang up from the recliner and rushed to join him. Unwilling to let him be the first to find out more about the secret room before she did. I'm not sure. He told me that this place was off limits for me years ago, so I never asked him about it. Looks like he's been doing a lot of research into something and monitoring what he sees. His eyes found a monitor on the far right side of the back wall. He stopped to point at it. Isn't that a video from our physics committee room in the community center? Jinhua diverted her attention from the desk to focus on the monitor. No way. Yeah, it is. But why would he want to watch that? Both exchanged bewildered faces each looking to the other for a comprehensible response. Neither found an answer. Yet they felt something else. An unmistakable connection. Almost as if one had access to the other's brain and its intricate contents. Jinhua experienced a strange heightening of her senses. It was different from the pool of attraction she had felt for him back at the river. It was something else. Something she couldn't quite name or characterize. 
Whatever it was, it was a familiar feeling. Somehow she knew he was experiencing the same exact sensation. After what seemed like the longest staring contest in history, Jinhua spun away from him toward the desk behind her. She latched on to the first object she saw in order to neutralize the disturbance of the atmosphere between them. Um, there sure are a lot of doc readers here. I always knew Dad was organized, but they look so... neat. She blushed uncontrollably at the emotional familiarity of Daniel's eyes and hoped her rambling words would be enough to take her mind off of his strangely captivating stare. Focusing on the desk to alleviate her discomfort, the details of its design became apparent to her. It was made of fine carved wood on the outside, but appeared to have a network interface built into its surface. The top of the desk was also a massive touchscreen that could be toggled to display a standard operating system interface or just show the plain surface of a desk. Jinhua switched between the modes several times, marveling at the simple yet impressive feature. Very Fei Hao! The surface of the desk glowed with an eerie blue light when it was in computer mode. It was alive with digital life housed within its microscopic circuitry and transistors. While looking at the upper right corner of the desk, she eyed a solitary document reader that had been separated from the rest of the orderly stack. Definitely out of place. She picked it up with the intent to return it to the pile, then suddenly stopped when she noticed the name on the heading of the reader. That's my name. On the top of the thin reader, Jinhua read, Ma Jinhua, DOI 2101-45. What is this? She examined the document reader with greater detail, feeling her hands grow cold with nervous sweat. It had been locked with some type of encryption method, leaving only her name and the odd number visible. Daniel made his way to her side from the wall monitors. What's that? I have no idea. But it's got my name and birth date on it. Daniel moved closer to Jinhua to get a better view. The warmth from his body made her arm tingle. The strange, not quite attraction feeling rose again. In the span of minutes, she had already given the phenomenon a name. In the moment, her burning curiosity about the doc reader overshadowed the sensation. For real? I didn't know your birthday was January 21st, Daniel said. Yeah, it is. She continued to analyze the reader from all angles, looking for any way to unlock it. When's yours? August 16th. What year? 2045. Guess we were born the same year. Damn, Damn. Damn. something else in common. common. But I'm still older by six months. Jinhua flashed a playful smirk at him. Suppose I should respect my elders then, Daniel quipped. Jinhua slapped him on the arm with her free hand in response. Ow, that hurt. Daniel rubbed his arm. You hit pretty hard. Serves you right. She continued to rotate the reader, 
clueless about how to proceed. You gotta learn to respect your elders. Daniel gave an understanding nod while he watched her struggle with the reader. Ugh, why won't this damn thing open? The trifecta of hunger, tiredness, and teenage hormones had rendered her brain useless. One of the three were always to blame whenever she felt incompetent at something. Did you try voice decryption? Daniel asked. She tried it. Nope, no luck. What about hand gesture decryption? Jinhua curled her fingers into a position that pantomimed the action of unlocking a door with a physical key in front of the reader's context-sensitive area. No response. Damn it. Any other ideas? What about retinal scans? I heard some of the older readers still use that dated biometric stuff. How is he so calm? She brought the camera to her eye and held it open for several seconds. The strain caused her vision to blur with tears. Despite her effort, the device remained locked. Then she firmly pressed her thumb to the screen. Still nothing. I'm about to say forget it. Nothing's working, she said, her tone petulant. Daniel's laugh echoed around the room as he carefully took the reader from her hands. Maybe your dad didn't use any fancy techniques to lock this old reader. He's old, so he probably used some type of low-tech security measure. Like what? I don't know. Like an old password? Jinhua's eyes wandered to the corner of the room with the old recliner and telephone sitting under the halo of light from the standing lamp. Okay, I think I got it. If I'm wrong, I'm saying to hell with this thing and getting a snack. She commanded the reader to show a password block. The machine complied, displaying an empty block with a blinking cursor, awaiting input. Jinhua verbally input the letters of her full name and date of birth. J-I-N-H-U-A-M-A-0-1-2-1-4-5 The reader instantly came to life. Wow, good thinking, Jinhua said. Daniel smiled. You know, I do have good ideas every now and then. She mirrored his cheer. Her smile vanished when the contents of the reader appeared on the small screen. It contained six orderly columns of folders, labeled with traditional Chinese characters. She made an earnest attempt to read the first two folders. Shen Shu something something Xiang no idea. She sounded out the words in her head, unwilling to subject Daniel to her shameful pronunciation and her abysmal knowledge of tones in her heritage language. Damn, Damn. I wish I had paid, paid more attention during, during those Chinese, Chinese committees. committees. Daniel peered over her shoulder. What do those folders say? Can you read them? I'm not sure. They use traditional characters instead of the simplified ones that I'm used to. She felt a pang of inadequacy at her inability to make out the script of a language that she should have known well. Daniel seemed to sense her guilt and kept quiet. One of the columns contained folders labeled in English. Finally, Finally some luck. Some luck. She opened one labeled Statistics. Several subfolders populated the screen. She scanned them all with machine efficiency. 
There's one with my name on it. She opened it. What she saw on the screen narrowly caused her to drop the device onto the smooth, dark blue tile of the floor. She scrolled down the reader, heart thundering in her chest. Ma Jinhua. Date of initialization, 21 January 2045. Place of initialization, Yuba City, California. Father, Ma, Lee. Mother, donor. Is this me? Mother, donor? Date of initialization? Place of initialization? What the hell is this? A noise at the entrance of the study distracted her from the reader. Both whipped their heads toward the door, where the shadow of a person appeared in the narrow space between the heavy oak door and its frame. All of a sudden, Jinhua felt the urge to shut the reader and hide. The heavy door slowly opened, and Lee stepped through. His usual erect posture withered by the events of a very long day. Jinhua placed the document reader on the desk, momentarily forgetting about the question swirling in her mind, and jogged over to him. She embraced him with as much strength as she could gather. Tears streamed down her face. She could feel his hot tears finding their place on her shoulder in his tight grip. I know it was hard for you, Lee said, but I'm all right. They separated. Jinhua looked into her father's eyes and asked, Dad, I know you just got home, but I saw a doc reader on your desk that said something about me and... Mom, what is it about? Where to begin, Lee thought. His eyes parted from Jinhua's penetrating sight and fell onto the young man standing next to his desk. As if prompted into action by sight, the teenager began to approach him. He did not seem intimidated by Lee's presence. Mr. Ma, I'm Daniel. He extended his hand in an awkward manner to invite a handshake. Lee peered at him sideways, with more curiosity than suspicion, then reached out and shook his hand. Nice to meet you, Daniel. Do you mind waiting downstairs for a while? I have some things to discuss with my daughter. No problem, Mr. Ma. I need to call my parents anyway to let them know I'll be home late tonight. Good idea. Lee said. Daniel flashed an encouraging expression at Jinhua before he departed. Her eyes watched him until he pulled the thick door open and walked through to the red carpet. He closed it behind him, sealing her inside. The sound reminded her of a bank vault closing, echoing, definitive, Final. Lee looked into his daughter's eyes. They were slightly puffy from tears, but they still contained the insatiable spark for boundless knowledge, a trait they both shared. She's ready, She's ready, ready, ready. he told himself. She's ready, She's ready to, to hear to it hear all. all. He sighed heavily then took tired steps toward the giant desk. At the press of a button, a panel in the front of the desk opened, revealing four squared cushion stools inside. The cushions were red and embroidered with a golden trim that twisted around the border of the square shape. Jinhua was captivated by the beautiful representation 
of traditional Chinese colors on miniature squared bar stools. But she was more impressed four stools had somehow been crammed into the guts of the desk. I'm getting a desk like this when I have my own office. She archived the mental note in her mind for further research at a later date. Li pulled out one of the stools, then invited Jinhua to do the same with a hand gesture. They both sat down, facing each other, father and daughter, both preparing to have a conversation Li knew would alter the course of her life and his relationship with her forever. She's ready. I am ready. The emotion of the reunion, the kidnapping, and all of the other respective happenings of both their days seemed to coalesce into a powerful force that was supernatural and apparent to both. It transformed the air around them into a thick, gaseous haze. A suffocating force that threatened to render them both unconscious if left unchecked. Lee was ready to cleanse the room and return it to a neutral state. Dad, what is it? Lee's eyes rose to meet hers. Okay, Jinhua. I'll tell you what you need to know. It's a long story. And he began to speak. <laughs> 